Okay, good evening everybody. Uh, good evening, Catherine. Good evening, uh, Laura. Good evening, Iman, Jivon. Uh, I apologize for being a little late because there was some technical uh, glitch here. But now we are online and we can start now. So today we're going to talk on scope of homeopathy in addictions. Now, addictions have been a, a subject which is very close to my heart. And I've always uh, uh, marveled about how addictions medicine is and how to treat addicts because it's such a rampant disease now and it requires such a great treatment and so much economy, uh, economical loss and so much uh, dollars are spent in treatment of addictions because not only addictions but addictions lead to a lot of crim cri crime and a lot of health problems which governments all over the world are spending nowadays. But when it comes to homeopathy, we have seen that homeopathy really works very, very good in addiction. Not only the relapse rates with homeopathy are low, but also the compliance is much better. And uh, also the treatment is easy once you get through the constitution remedy. So let us start today uh, my presentation on scope of homeopathy in addictions. Let's uh, start with, first of all, what do you mean by addiction? Addiction is a psychological and physical inability to stop consuming a chemical drug, activity or substance, even though it is causing psychological and physical harm. Now, this is something which is very, very important. It is a psychological and physical inability. That means even if a person wants to stop, he will not be able to stop. Because later on, we are going to talk about what is use, what is misuse, what is abuse, and what is addiction or dependence. Till a particular level, a person starts using things, he's able to stop it. He knows how to control it. He knows how to stop it. But at a particular level, this thin line of difference, that is between stopping and not stopping, it goes away and he's just not able to stop. And this dependency is not only psychological, but it's also physical. So it is a psychological and physical inability to stop consuming a chemical, a drug, some activity, or a substance even though it is causing psychological and physical harm. This is very, very important. The term addiction does not only refer to dependence on substances such as heroin, cocaine, alcohol, tobacco. There are many substances. A person who cannot stop taking a particular drug or chemical has a substance dependence. Now, addiction was supposed to be an old word. Remember, it is an old terminology, addiction. Now, it is a new terminology is dependence. And we don't say a drug addiction, we talk about substance or substance dependence. Some addictions also involve an inability to stop partaking in activities such as gambling, eating, working, exercise. In these circumstances, a person has a behavioral addiction. This is also known as process addiction. Gambling is one of the most important process addictions. And nowadays you see internet. Nowadays you see PUBG. These are the addictions which children are addicted to nowadays. And these are so very, very, very important. So these are known as process addiction. So there is substance addiction or substance use and there are behavioral or process addiction. What is a drug? Now let us find out what is a drug? What is a psychoactive substance? Now drug, any substance with the exception of food and water, which when taken into the body alters its functions physically and or psychologically is known as drug. Any substance which when taken into the body alters the functions of the mind is known as psychoactive substance. Now, when you take food and water, it alters the function physically, psychologically, we feel better, but it is not changing the function of the mind, right? But when a substance which changes the function of the mind taken inside the body, then it is known as a psychoactive substance. So you should know what is a drug and what is a psychoactive substance. Now remember, you know that whenever the person comes for treatment, the first four, five, six days are of detoxification. That means when he is left without alcohol or without any substance, the substance is just allowed to wean off the body or wear off the body just like that. Many a times it's very, very tough detoxification process and has to be done either in, in a proper hospitalized surrounding or in a properly supervised surrounding because many a times the withdrawals are really, really, really bad. And many a times you have to sedate these people, you have to tie these people because they become really mad with the detoxification process. 
So the detoxification phase is very, very important. And before the withdrawal starts in detoxification, before the effects of withdrawal start coming, you should start with the medicines because, or start with homeopathy because if you wait for the symptoms to come, the symptoms are so bad that first thing is you'll have to either sedate or give some allopathic tranquilizer to him. Secondly, after he silences, he will just say that I want to go back home. I don't want to stay here. So it's very, very important to give the homeopathic medicine just before the symptoms of withdrawal come when the patient is admitted in the vessel. It's very, very important. You cannot give once the withdrawal symptoms come. Because once the withdrawal symptoms come, many a times the Solanaceae family, especially the Stramonium, the Hyosamus, the Belladonas are going to emerge. At that time, it becomes very, very difficult. The delirium tremens. It's very, very difficult to control the patient. So, okay, you get the symptomatology at that time, but some symptoms are available before also, and you can think of some constitution or some specific at that time. When addiction has been used to mask the emotional turmoil within, this will rapidly emerge. Remember, most of the problems are emotional problems. In the addicts, they have suffered a lot emotionally. Addiction has become like a mask to them. And when this mask is used, all the emotional problems are going to come up. He's going to cry, he's going to become emotional, he's going to become aggressive. Everything, all the emotional upheaval is going to come up. The demons within emerge as soon as the drink departs. The person is left vulnerable, frightened, overwhelmed by the force of these long buried emotions. Especially abuse, remember, when abuse is hidden by addiction, if you remove the addiction, the whole thing, it comes like a post-traumatic stress syndrome. It takes great strength not to relapse back. Okay. At that time, it becomes very, very difficult. The delirium tremens. It's very, very difficult to control the patient. So, Okay, you get the symptomatology at that time, but some symptoms are available before also, and you can think of some constitution or some spells with the whole person on every level, the mind, body, and spirit. It is perfect for assisting this transitional phase. So the first phase of treatment in homeopathy is detoxification. Now in detoxification, I told you that detoxification phase is so important that first of all, you have to drain. So even IV fluids are okay at that time. And Hospital administration is very, very important. You cannot detox somebody at your clinic like this. Especially with somebody with alcohol or long-standing drug use, you cannot just tell them that, okay, I'm giving you some medicine, some homeopathy, now you can go home and detox. No, no, no. It's a big no. Please admit the patient to a hospital where there is a facility of a nurse, there is a facility for all kinds of emergencies because detoxifications can be really, really bad, especially with alcohol. For long-standing alcoholics, when they stop alcohol, abstain alcohol, suddenly they're going to be bad, bad, bad illusions, delusions, and hallucinations. Your stramoniums and hyosamas and belladonna will help you, but only in a hospital setting. It's very, very important, friends. So don't even try to think of trying to detox somebody on an OPD basis. You have to do that in the IPD. Later on, de-addiction or rehabilitation can be done at the OPD level but not the detox. Be very, very clear. You know, in homeopathy, there is a belief in myasms. Okay, so that's what, why, why myasms are important because that is the soil. Like we are talking about the soil, we are talking about the tree of addiction. The soil contains myasm. Myasms comes from our forefathers, the grandfathers, the grandmother. And this is the luggage that we carry. Somebody who's got a syphilitic myasm will be more prone to alcoholism than the rest who has got a soric or a psychotic background. But a psychosyphilitic has again a more, right? So medicine recognizes the hereditary component of many diseases. The contemporary medicine says that, okay, 50% if 50 chances are there if the father is an alcoholic, then the son will become an alcoholic. So medicine says that the genetics is important. But what homeopathy thinks is the myasm. So homeopathy takes it one stage further and includes the conditions that are not genetically immediate. It is common to see family members share, share the same or similar remedies, therefore behavioral patterns. If the men in the family internalize their problems and drown them in a drink, I talked about this, the child will learn that in their family this is the way to deal with life. So then the role model is doing this, so drinking is normal, so I am going to drink it. So alcohol may be freely available in that household, so the child develops a taste for it quite early. The treatment of addiction is challenging but highly rewarding. It is essential that there is excellent communication and collaboration between professionals assisting and that a deep trusting non-judgmental relationship is established. Now this is very very important. Addiction treatment is not very easy. Remember that. 
that's why uh, i am not surprised that there are only few people who are interested in this webinar because most of the people don't want to deal with addiction and this webinar was particularly designed for people to start getting interested into addiction because addiction is the thing of present and future we will be requiring homeopathy will be the only choice of treatment for addiction allopathy can't do anything you can do a physical detox but you cannot do a mental detox my friends physical detox you have a lot of things you you will put an iv fluids you can give them uh, dizepam you can give them valiums you can give them barbiturates to silence them to sleep them to make them numb but what is what about the mental detox what about the emotional detox what about the spiritual detox who is going to detox them physically you can detox them go to a hospital do some iv fluids pass lot of urine and your detox after 7 days he again goes to 8 day to drink alcohol what is this detox we are not concerned with detox we are concerned with mental detox detox and that is what homeopathy does so therefore my friends this is this webinar was particularly intended for everybody for you and i am going to see to it that the recording reaches to all the homeopaths all the homeopaths should know that addiction is the future of medicine and we have to be strong enough to deal with addiction we have to collaborate with hospitals we have to collaborate with physicians with the uh, uh, counselors and treat addiction as a team of team with whatever disease whether it is psoriasis whether it is vitiligo whether it is eczema whether it is asthma whether it is arthritis uh, anything never ever forget the history of alcoholism history of tobacco or history of any other drug very very important the patient can present with chief complaint of alcoholism or drug addiction that is in the stage of withdrawal de addiction or rehabilitation then look for original unmodified feature the patient can present to us with any other complaints with associated problem of alcoholism which he may not feel as a problem but his spouse or relatives or children might feel most of us will get patients of this class you know patients coming to us with secondary alcoholism we have to find out the pqrs symptoms pqrs symptoms is as i told craving aversion any other modalities which are related to his primary problem like asthma and all but you have to also cover his alcoholism remember don't treat only one problem we are not allopaths to treat one 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 problem like this we are going to take it holistically so we are going to take it as asthma as well as alcoholism allergy as well as alcoholism so everything as a proper totality we have to create and we have to see that in the follow up the alcoholism has to reduce if the asthma attack is better but his alcoholism still goes on that means maybe we have not uh, uh, maybe we are not right in whatever we are doing we are not given the right similimum the right similimum has to take care of the alcoholism also and also the asthma of course lot of counseling is involved lot of meditation meetings uh, yoga everything is involved but alcoholism also has to we know for us to go miasmatic travel now alcoholism is a chronic disease i told you addiction is a chronic disease so it has a miasmatic travel in the soric phase as i have told you initially everything starts with inquisitiveness experimentation finding out what what it is why should i use it what will happen if i use it peer pressure is there competition is there so so right always starts with sora and at this level if you pick these people in the soric phase and give them good anti soric treatment they will not progress to the future stages where it will be more difficult to handle them so sora is the first of the miasmatic travel then from sora he goes into psychosis because once he starts using regularly he will require money for it he will require to lie for it he will become deceitful he will become manipulative he will become cunning egoistic stealing embezzlement frauds hiding nature deceitful fixed on thoughts of procuring so everything becomes fixed around that alcohol around that substance so therefore he enters into psychotic mind and most of the alcoholics we will find in psychotic mind so we'll have to have remedies which cover basically the psychotic mind and the syphilitic mind to treat addiction as a disease tubercular could be one of the phase where there is lot of risk taking behavior audacious reckless impulsive could be starting up from tubercular if there is a strong history of tuberculosis in the family right syphilis is the last phase where he can become homicidal suicidal because that is a rock bottom phase he doesn't know what to do he can either kill himself he can kill somebody else for alcohol destructive anger violence using in spite of negative consequences this is typical of syphilis is typical of syphilitic miasm that i will use it i know it is going to cause problem to me i know it is going to kill me but st- we have to help them out and homeopathy is a good instrument to help them out and uh, there is always a way out so there is a tunnel 
again something like a rattus rattus there is a tunnel and there is an opening and but there is a way out always the tunnel is never closed from both the sides remember there is always an opening and you will always find out a way out and homeopathy is the only way out thank you very much if you have any queries please don't hesitate to contact me this is my